In this tutorial, we will be talking about disaccharides. A disaccharide is a compound that consists of two monosaccharides. And in the previous units, we've talked about the three primary monosaccharides, or the three most common ones, are glucose, galactose, and fructose. Fructose was the only ketone, while galactose and glucose are both, glu are both aldehydes. The difference between the galactose and the glucose is on that fourth carbon. Those are the things that you need to remember. So just like there's three common monosaccharides that we talked about, there are three common polysaccharides that we're going to, or three common disaccharides that we're going to talk about. And those are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. Maltose is glucose and glucose. Lactose is glucose and galactose whereas sucrose is glucose and fructose. So let's talk about mal maltose first. Maltose is a disaccharide known as malt sugar. It's actually what we use in cereals, candies, and brewing. It consists of two D-glucose molecules, and it can be both alpha and beta. Now, when we look at alpha and beta of disaccharides, what we're doing is we're looking at the very first carbon of the first part of the molecule. So there's two monosaccharides here. We're looking at the one on the far right. All right, so it's actually considered what's called an alpha 1,4-glycosidic bond. That's what's holding the two monosaccharides together. This can be broken down just simply by breaking down the words. So alpha. Alpha is meaning that the OH is coming down. It's referring to the first carbon here. That's an alpha glucose. It's the first carbon is alpha and it's bonding to the fourth carbon. We don't have to say alpha beta for that fourth carbon because glucose by what it is, that OH is coming down. If it was galactose, the OH would be going up. But because it's going down, we know it's glucose. So the only time when we're talking about the alpha here, what we're talking about is the first carbon. That carbon is alpha. So alpha carbons one, four, glycosidic bond. That forms the alpha format forms almost like a V looking oxygen. Now this as maltose, this particular example is alpha maltose because that OH is going down. If that OH by chance was going up up here, it would be considered beta maltose. Let's look at lactose. Lactose is galactose in glucose. Notice that the OH here is actually up where the OH on the fourth carbon here is down. That, once again, is how you know the difference between glycose and glucose. Now this is going to be down with beta 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So when we're talking about beta, we're talking about that first carbon right here. Since that OH group is up, it's considered beta. And it's going to, again, attach to that oxygen on that fourth carbon. Notice that when it was beta, it forms almost like a straight line. Alpha, you get like this V formation. Beta, you have a straight line. Sucrose is the third one. It's made of glucose and fructose. And it's actually considered an alpha, beta, one, two. So we have to do a little bit more because there's actually some variance here. Of the glucose, the glucose has to be in alpha position, which means that the glucose has to be pointing down, that OH group. The beta is coming from that second carbon of the fructose. That has to be pointing up, so that has to be beta. So that's why it's alpha and beta. Alpha is coming from the glucose. Beta is coming from the fructose. And it's forming this weird-looking bond there, but it's still a glycosidic bond. So that's alpha, beta, one, two. So the alpha is the one, beta is the two. Glycosidic bond. So when we're actually looking at artificial sweeteners, it's actually interesting that
they are far more can consider far more sweet than other sugars. That's why it takes far less to put sweet and low in your iced tea than it does to put actual sugar in your iced tea, and it tastes a lot sweeter. All right, so let's go through these and see what we can remember. Lactose. That's going to be glucose and galactose added together. Maltose is glucose and glucose added together. And then sucrose is glucose and fructose. Let's see if we remember this. Malabios is a disaccharide that is 30 times sweeter than sucrose. So basically we're given this compound and we have to determine what it's made of. So what are the monosaccharides units in Malabios? Well, we see that we have two hexagons here. So that means fructose is out. So that means it's either glucose or galactose. Well, to tell the difference, you have to look at the fourth carbon. The fourth carbon is up here, so this is galactose. The fourth carbon, is, the OH group is down here, so this is glucose. All right, so is, are these alphas or are they betas? Let's look at that first carbon. Here, the OH group was originally coming down. That means it was alpha. This one, once again, is going down, so that's alpha. So alpha galactose and alpha glucose. What type of glycosidic bond links these two? Well, we know this is alpha, so it's an alpha 1, 6 glycosidic bond. And finally, is this alpha or beta melibios? Well, since it's going, though it's is going down, it'd be alpha. There's the alpha-1,6 glycosidic and alpha-galactose and alpha-glucose.